How's it going? Hey, Al. All right. This is my go. friend, Al. Hi, how's it going? He works at Heights Beach High School and lets us skate whenever we want. Who was on it? Like, who were skaters you went on tours with and who did you like on New Deal? We didn't go on tour. That's another interesting thing. Like, uh, the, there was no tour. I mean, the, my first tour that I went on, New Deal, I don't think had the money to do a tour. We didn't have the organization. So what happened was I became friends with Mike V. So Mike, you know, would be in Southern California and they connected all the time and skated together and they would go on tour together. You know, and Mike V was a couple years older and he'd sort of draft that along. You know, and to us as a sponsor, it was great because we weren't in the place of like ready to have a New Deal tour or anything like that. This all happened through our girlfriends, essentially. I mean, Mike's current wife is was best friends with Deanna. And they knew each other before they ever got involved with Skater Kids, you know. And oh, this let me explain this. So Jason Lee's girlfriend was Ann, who's married to Mike now. We all ditched school one day to go to a Chili Peppers concert up in L.A. This is 86 when the Chili Peppers were cool. Um, <laughs> let me throw that in there. And Ann brought her friend Deanna, and that's how I met Deanna, basically, like on that car ride up to L.A. It's hot, and we stopped to get like a drink at like a soda, at a soda machine. I get like a Dr. Pepper or something. I'm about to drink it, and right as I get there, Jason Lee just comes up and snatches it out of my hand and like drinks the whole thing. And I was like, fuck. And I was all sad, and Deanna's like, Deanna tells me later, she's like, that's when I like fell in love with you, basically. You were so cute. Jason was being mean to you, and you just kind of pouted. I had the sense that he didn't have any money. And it was, I think it was at that moment, I just saw you looked up with those big green eyes and your braces and your little skate dude and zits. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. <laughs> and then it was just on. It was like, I don't know. I just, he was so sweet. And so she told Anne like, later that she thought I was cute. And I was like, let's hook this up, let's go on it, let's get a date going. So we went, me, Aunt Jason and Ann, and me and Deanna went to go see Fatal Attraction at the movie theater. I had uh, acid washed je uh, denim jeans and an acid washed jacket. I don't know what, was, what, I, was, what I was thinking. It was like your date. And I was trying to grow a scum stash. Yeah, I was like, I thought I was dressing nice, yeah. And after the date, I like went in for a kiss and missed and ended up kissing her like up here on the cheek. And I was too petrified to like make it up. I just like was like oh and like walked off all weird like uh. But yeah, like that's how we started. That's how me and Deanna met basically and started going out. We had one more time of hanging out, and then on the third hangout, I just remember sitting on a curb with Ann watching you skate, and then you sat down really quick, and you're like, "Am I your boyfriend now?" I just remember looking at Ann, and she like kind of shrugged her shoulders. I'm like, "Sure." <laughs> Never been apart since. You got stuck with me right then. So I was, I became friends with Mike V because over time now, Jason and Ann broke up. Somehow Ann started dating Mike V. He would like come and visit Ann in like Huntington Beach and stuff. Me and Jason would go skate with Mike V a lot. Basically, I was on New, New Deal was happening. Mike was on World, but we were, we were good friends. So he invited me on tour. That's what your question was like, what about tours with New Deal? And I said, we never toured New Deal. My first tour in 1990 was with Mike V on a World Industries tour essentially. World was much more established as a business group. You know, they were doing tours and things. We just weren't at that place yet. Mike V is one of those people to help start that model and take that further. Mike V had this like work ethic of like, we're going on a fucking tour every day, show up at a shop, kick ass, no fucking around. Mike was kind of like sort of at odds with Rocco a little bit. Seriously, gonna lose your job here, all you guys. I was just like, I'm doing my own fucking tour. I don't want to do a World Industries tour. I'm gonna pick my own people. And he is friends with the New Jersey connections with Felix and Dune who were on World. But he liked me, so he's just like, you know what, I'm just doing a tour with my boys, Felix and Dune, and I'm gonna bring Ed. And so he just set it up as like the Valley Summer Tour. It wasn't even like billed as a World Industries tour. It was just like tour with these guys. And that is really the start of my pro career. all like world expanding shit. I'm like literally lived in the suburbs my whole life here in Southern California. And now I'm like crossing the country for the first time, seeing all these different states, seeing all these different people, getting in all these situations. I mean, there's like a thousand stories I could tell you from that first tour. B 
being in the South with Mike looking like a skinhead, like crazy. We almost got our killed a bunch of times. And I wasn't part of their group, so it was like really weird. And it's like, I feel like Felix made me cry on part, some part of the tour, you know, he like was being mean to me, like they would make fun of me. I don't know, but like, literally my summer was all of June, 30 demos in 30 days from the West Coast to the East Coast. You know, I was seasoned to that point. Every, say skating a new obstacle course every single day and showing off and like make doing all your moves. I was ready for a contest. And that is what primed me to go to Europe that year and wreck all those contests. And then I think he had a chance to go skate the Europe contest one year. And so it was a big deal for him, like consider dropping out. And I think he went and talked to his grandparents about it. And his grandparents were like, you'll learn more traveling the world than you will in high school. Once we left the tour, it was like on my own. I was like, I was basically like, you're gonna be flying from New York to Europe. No one picked me up or anything. I'm just in an airport in Frankfurt going, I'm screwed, man. And uh, Jake Phelps was getting off a plane and I didn't know who he was, but I'm like, that guy looks like a skater. So I kind of went over there like thinking like these guys must be coming for the contest because they look like skaters. They had skateboards and stuff. And I kind of like went over there and sort of made myself seen by them. Like, and luckily he's just like, a Templeton. Cause like Jake is like, you know, skate encyclopedia. Was like, yeah, come with us. And he helped me like get to the hotel and find the New Deal people that didn't pick me up. It's kind of crazy because it's like, I'm young. There's an establishment of guys, you know? Dressing, Hasoy, Oster. I mean, this is that generation still. And the stuff we were doing was different. You know, Dressing's line might be like, Creole slide the quarter pipe, you know, do a fat air over the hip, like board side the handrail. You know, I'm like scorching one foots over the hip and like impossibling, but then I would do a one foot board slide, which no one had seen before, you know? He was just progressive. Simple as that, and the guys that were sort of resting on their laurels or where they'd been in Ed's foundation wasn't set yet. His mind was still open. So it's a generational perspective, you know? So Ed, Ed was an icon for a new generation of skateboarders. He had a huge following, you know, in mainland Europe and England. Ed is so unique, you know? So at that time, that uniqueness stood out even more than now. And he was on fire at that time as well. Had his own bag of tricks and was really good in contests, really good in demos. and. Just creatively wide open. I was a huge Ed Templeton fan. It felt crazy winning because at this point the Moonster contest was big. I mean, stadium filled with kids screaming and the whole town got overrun with skaters. This was like the only time I think in my lifetime I ever have that kind of situation. So you, you did your, how many, did you win one contest? There was three contests and I won all of them. <laughs> like I said, I was like, I was ready. Did you come and, home? I got conquered Europe. I mean, in a way, it was kind of like that. I mean, like, because there was, back then they covered contests. So, like, I remember, like, getting a bunch of coverage in the mag, and it was, like, those two months of 1990 really, like, established me as, like, this guy, you know? Flying back from the contest I won in Europe, another thing, rad thing Paul Schmidt did, got me a limo to pick me up at the airport. So he was like, oh, let's get a limo for our skate star. Deanna was there, dressed up, all fancy, and picked me up. I'd see guys do things special and I wanted to be part of making that special thing happen. In his first year as a rookie, nobody else in that era did what he did, put out banging video parts that set the tone for skateboarding and won contests. You know, they, they didn't go together. That was my peak. I'm like super fortunate to have had a couple peaks in a way, but that was my like real peak was 1990. I mean, 1990 was like, you're a turn pro. The only time I had covers on mags was in 1990, Transworld and Thrasher, oh, Trans I think was 89, and then Thrasher was in 90. But when it came out in Transworld, it was like, and things took a really long time to come out back then, it seemed like. He knows, granted, that rail, that poster, oof, he's one of, he's one of those dudes now. Like, he's like, like he's not, he's like Nodis now. And it was bugged out, and I was still mega young. And that's it, I never had like one of the major magazines covers again. Uh, Still to this day? Yeah. One, one Transworld, one Thrash? Yeah. They did like a cover, like a cover with a bunch of people's so faces on it. To this day, you haven't? Mm -mm. Never Big Brother either. I was bros with those guys. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's I mean, I just like, assumed he had a Big Brother cover for the longest time. He never, and he's like, no, I never did. Like, really? Like, we never gave you a cover? How did we do that? He's like, you guys want to be real sliding with my boner? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck. And Big Brother, it was like, I, I think I was like such good friends with those guys that it was, it was almost like a joke. 
he would be like, I'll give you the cover right now if you like board set a rail with a boner. I want to, I want, that's what I want for the cover. Like, I think you might be the only person who might try it. So if you board set a rail coming at the camera with a boner naked, I'll give you the cover. And I was just like, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. So like, I never got the cover. But then every year since then, like the next year, 91, me and Mike did our own demo. Just literally me and him in a van. Nobody. You guys from different companies. Yeah. No, I think this time, this time it was new, he was on New Deal at this point. Oh, yeah. He was on New Deal in 92, I think. And we just did a tour by ourselves. Again, it was set up a huge like 30 demo, 30 day type thing, a massacre, masochist tour. Yeah. At some point, Ed said, hey, can Mike be on the team? I confirmed that, you know, he didn't have a contract tying him up or anything like that. And Mike kept on having all this pressure from World where basically, you're old, retire, get the hell out of here. We don't want you around anymore. And that eventually is what, you know, led Mike to being on a new deal and then eventually led them to try to be their own deal. That's what happened, basically. I mean, got on New Deal, who I had been telling him, like, this is a great company, man. It's really cool. We get to do it. You get to be in control, like, whatever. But I think when he got on New Deal, Mike came from a situation on World Industries where he was making like 10 grand a month off board sales. I mean, they were cooking those double kick farm animal boards. You know, I'm making like three to eight grand a month depending on board sales, which at that time was like, this is epic, you know? But I think making three grand for Mike, who had been used to making 10 grand, was a huge lifestyle change. And so I think he, his thinking was like, let's start our own company. We'll make all the money, it'll be great. And so I kind of like got bought into that and said, yeah, let's do it, you know? So I like essentially quit New Deal to start TV with Mike. 